uh, unified research methodology course. Uh, may I know from the participant or even you can uh, let me know how many percent are clinical, how many percent are non-clinical? About half-half too? Camila? Uh, Is it half? half? Just, 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 just. I'm uh, Samne Saliza from Hostel Melaka. Uh, clinical. Oh, clinical. So would I say more clinical than non-clinical or because uh, I've gauged it uh, because I thought there'll be people from non-clinical. So um, and um, one thing I noticed uh, about because previously, uh, sorry, just double check to all the participants. Can you hear me clearly or not? I think the, the uh, non-clinical prof. OK, OK. Can you hear me clearly? Yeah, 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 you, yeah, okay. you. Okay, Alhamdulillah. Because the yeah, the reason is uh, we are using team at the moment. Team takes a lot of data, and uh, the area where I'm in at the hospital, uh, sometimes uh, the connection is not as good. So I'm I'm I I was uh, surprised they're using team instead of Zoom. But anyway, uh, and then I look at the program. You will have a lot of other discussion later. Uh, in detail. Uh, mine is just an introduction and it's a very dry subject. Uh, I will try my best just for in introduction. And secondly, uh, I don't think it's quite right. Uh, maybe Camila can tell me for two hours. Nobody can actually talk on Zoom for two hours. So what I'll do is my slide is less than an hour probably or maybe a bit uh, just about 40 minutes. But in between, uh, should you have any uh, uh, questions or discussion, uh, just either indicate or just interrupt me because uh, I can't, like I said, I'm not too familiar with team. So you just uh, switch on your uh, video or just shout it out. Yeah. So with that in hand, I uh, think Thanks. I will start. Is that okay? Any any questions before I, um, I doctor, uh, start? Good, mo good morning, doctor. Yes, good morning. morning. I have one question. No question. Uh, is there any recording we'll be sharing afterwards? Uh, it is being recorded. Uh, I think uh, you can ask the secretariat. So uh, um, I think it will be available. Uh, it is recorded, by the way. All right. Yeah? Thank you, Doctor. OK, but I think they're trying to make sure that everybody uh, uh, listens in. So maybe I'll just shout out a few questions just in case. OK. Um, OK, so we the will start. Uh, any question? Yes, go ahead. Questions? Yes, yes, after, please. Yeah, after the session, we'll get slides. After uh, session, you can get to those Yes, slides. yes. I think I think for at least for my session, okay. I will uh, convert it to PDF and then you can have it. Uh, I'm not sure how it is uh, later, whether you have assessment or not, but um, they haven't asked me for any question for my slides anyway. Mine is just an introduction, so okay. sit back and there's nothing to to uh, bizarre about it. OK, so my name again. Uh, Assalamualaikum, very good morning. Welcome all. Um, I've been tasked to have this discussion in the morning. Uh, this is a compulsory, I take it, course for those uh, sitting either uh, master's or PhD, master's clinical or, or uh, PhD in our kuliah. Um, and uh, it is a new, uh, I'm not sure how new it is, uh, that they've combined between clinical and unclinical, and later you will be divided into groups, I think. Okay, the topic that has been asked to me is Introduction to Responsible Research and Innovation. Um, okay. So, uh, for some of you, I'm a, a vascular surgeon by, by by training. So what that entails is usually when when we, we do some uh, or we uh, train people, uh, everything is relative. Uh, something we learn in three days um, and uh, we sometimes need three months to learn what uh, how to use that procedure. Some of you are clinician, I'm sure you can uh, can uh, identify with this. However, to be masters, you need 30 years. How best not to do it? I suppose if it translates into research, same thing. 
And sometimes what you learn about research, uh, how to do research, uh, and about a year or two years ago, suddenly it has changed. So therefore, it is a very, uh, if I might use the word fluid, it's ever changing. So nothing is, I mean, uh, apart from certain principle, uh, uh, the, the, the bounds uh, all is ever changing. For example, now I will uh, touch a bit uh, about the use of AI and what the ethics of it. So we don't, we haven't heard it the last three or four years and suddenly that has come and becomes uh, a bit more acceptable in the, uh, in the uh, society, okay? So uh, just a disclosure, uh, I have no financial implication for this. Uh, they've asked me in the capacity because uh, I'm previously a member of the Kulia Research Committee. And for the clinicals, uh, for my uh, specialty, I'm also a coordinator and then a conjoint board member. Uh, I've done some uh, um, uh, industry sponsored by Nelix, uh, Sigvaris, and Esculap, but I have no financial implication or uh, grants that I'm getting for this talk. Okay, just a bit of uh, introduction for this discussion. Um, okay, um, as I um, as I was preparing for this uh, this discussion, um, some or um, some. Um, uh, many of you have done research before and you have done or have uh, different backgrounds from before. For example, when I did my, my uh, clinical master's, it was uh, locally. So it is bound by the ethics and things about locally. Of course, there are certain standards that we have to uh, identify. And then uh, I went overseas for my fellowship and uh, I learned uh, certain things there, which uh, not the principle are the same, but uh, there are certain differences. And now coming back to IIUM, certain, certain things are also uh, has been put forward, uh, if I may, that is slightly uh, different, okay? So what I'm trying to say is, uh, when you are doing a research at your own uh, institution or wherever you are, please look into the local guidelines that uh, encompasses, especially in terms of ethics, locally, uh, versus, of course, the international governs everything, um, but do look at the fine print. Uh, for example, um, uh, in, in, in St. John's uh, uh, CVS lab, uh, we work with animal and also uh, in the hospital, we work with human subjects. So different things govern. And um, I think for some of you who's going to do some animal work, be because Malaysia previously, 10, 20 years ago, um, I think the government was slightly loose, but however, now it's very strict because we're also governed internationally. So be careful when, if you're doing um, uh, animal work. And the other thing I notice is, if you're do, doing something with human subjects, uh, there's a bit more that you need to look into as simple as taking blood regarding patients confidentiality and patients uh, uh, what do you call that um, uh, uh, if you want to get consent and things like that. don't assume because uh, we have uh, some groups uh, that wants to do uh, our our projects with the hospital with the patient um, but they forget about a proper consent. And, or, or the other thing is use, um, going to the field, testing certain things, you need to have uh, ethical approval with regards to consent. So don't forget when you're doing your uh, proposal. Yeah? And you have to factor that in because uh, you must think about logistic of getting on that. Okay? 
uh, if we uh, uh, have a direct translation, because the, the discussion is about responsible research and innovation, uh, uh, there's a lot of uh, definition from adjective, nouns, but in essence, having good judgment and the ability to act correctly and make decision on your own. I, I made that in red because act correctly, fine, but make decisions on your own. However, this is a, a literal uh, 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 definition. Uh, decision on your own, governed by whatever institution you are. Okay, so uh, for IIUM, uh, I take it that most, if not all of you are part of this uh, doing courses with us. We have a, a rector that specifically look into this. Uh, it is called, if you have not gone through the website, so it's Office of the Deputy Director for Responsible Research, Research and Innovation. So uh, what I'm trying to say is, please, um, before you embark, or some of you are in the middle or towards the end, always with your supervisor, double check. Or if you have two supervisors, one on site and one is in IIUM, always have a discussion to make sure that before you go ahead, that you have not crossed any boundaries. So this is, uh, I hope, because I took this last night, so this is our current deputy director. If you have not uh, come across, so this is the gentleman, Prof. Dr. Amir. Yeah? And I would like to quote what he uh, put in that uh, the, the research should be ethically conducted in collaboration or innovation so that it upholds integrity I think should be leverage partnership. So the other part of this responsible uh, research is impact on society. So whatever that you uh, propose in your study uh, should have uh, 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 an area where it has got meaningful impact on society. Gone are the days. Sometimes uh, in my field, in vascular surgery, we think about weird and wonderful uh, innovation. However, it only impacts, I don't know, 0.5% of the population, and it does not impact my surrounding, which is in Kuantan. So whenever I want to embark on um, any, uh, any uh, research, have a thought on impact on society in general. That's even better, I think. Okay. I took this. Uh, from the IIM vision and mission. So, in the in the journey uh, that you are doing your your um, research, think about this uh, uh, Kai principle of the IIM mission. So, uh, Khalifa, Amana, uh, Ikra, Rahman. I'm not going to go through it because. Um, what I'm trying to say is, if you're doing research with the with the university, you must be sensitive to this principle. Like I said, when I did my research elsewhere, I need to be governed by the local. So I need to look into what's important for that institution. So when you discuss with your supervisor, make sure uh, have a thought that is encompassing all, all this. I won't go into the detail. I'm sure your supervisor will update you. Uh, for those uh, Arabic speakers among us, uh, khair just means good. And it's just to show that whatever you do as a research is a good for the uh, mankind and society. It's not for, that's another thing about responsible research. It's not about individual. Uh, we'll talk about it. Some uh, lecturers do it for promotion. Some of it do for financial gain. But um, I think at the heart of it, it should be the good for all mankind. OK, so uh, what is this discussion would be what, how and why? So what is responsible research and innovation? We try to um, have also feedback from all of you because some of you um, have you all started with your research or are you in the beginning process or towards the end? Anybody uh, finishing or have finished their thesis? 
somebody from Kuliah Nursing just now. Are you in the beginning stage or finishing? I'm on the beginning, uh, Dr. Uh, Faizan. Still, uh, I'm you, mm. have, you, uh, have you done your thesis proposal? Have you presented? Uh, well, not yet. Okay, so you're in the, the phase of uh, doing your proposal, yes? Yes, I'm doing uh, the title of Early Warning Scoring System, oh. which is not, uh, not uh, not yet implemented implement in my area, uh, especially okay. uh, among government hospital in Malaysia. So I uh, want to embark uh, this method for okay. uh, detect deteriorating of patient in my hospital. Uh, okay. In my local area. So you you're, you're doing a PhD or masters? PhD of nursing. PhD. Okay. So you do PhD. You are at the moment in Hospital Melaka, yes? Yes, uh, plastic oh. surgery under Miss Izeti, Chef Linda. In in Melaka. Yes. Okay, and then your uh, supervisor is here in IIUM. Yes, uh, Doctor Sajiza. Okay. Uh, okay. So uh, I, th I I think I'm trying to look into the list of name. Do I recognize some of it or not? Uh, so uh, that is clinical. So oh yeah, I I think uh, oh who's Alisa Wong. I'm trying to go through the list. Uh, anyway, uh, what I'm trying to say, if you're in the proposal uh, stage, so what uh, you also need to discuss your supervisor with regards to what I said, the the, the principle of uh, good governance in, in, in uh, research in IUM. For those who are doing data analysis or even, sorry, at the um, uh, getting grants or managing your grants. So responsible uh, research is also something that you need. We'll, we'll talk about it in, uh, in a few slides. So what is it? Okay, so it doesn't move. Uh, what is all about? So these are the areas that you have to think about when you're going uh, through your responsible, when we talk about responsible research, it can affect you during the study design and ethics approval. So I think uh, our 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 colleague just now uh, talk about in the planning stage, and it has to do with some scoring. Therefore, the study design because it involves patient, it involves um, so you have to think about uh, the confidentiality. How how many um, hospital are you going to be involved? And each hospital have, the, have got their own ethical committee. Or if, let's say it's a ministry hospital, I think uh, I'm sure you know about an MRR, National um, uh, Center that gives ethical approval. But if your patient is from, let's say, hospital uh, uh, SASMAC or if it's hospital UKM, it's got a governing body that approves your ethics. And if, if it's uh, going to be done with patient, then uh, if it is uh, intervention for whatever reason, then 100% you need ethical approval. However, if it's questionnaire, you may or may not, depending on the institution. If I'm not mistaken, for Ministry of Health, you do need ethical approval, even though you're doing questionnaire. Uh, however, there's a, um, if you're going to do a retrospective, from the data of the hospital, it depends. So they will discuss and whether it needs ethical approval or not because it's going into patient's database. Of course, uh, these are the other thing where, where uh, your responsibility or have a responsible with regards to ethical consideration. When you analyze data, uh, because uh, you may or may not exclude certain data so that's not ethical uh, don't forget about authorship uh, you know recently in the papers it affect one of our local institution that uh, the problems with authorship so that's being responsible as well either uh, you have a, a, a agreement with your supervisor uh, who becomes the authorship for your work because even though you do the work the the actual research belong to the university. So you need to iron this out before you finish. Because sometimes when you finish, you go to another institution. The study belongs to the university. 
so who should or how and things like that with regard to um, uh, writing up and the manuscript. So iron that out initially with your supervisor at the institution. And the other thing is, uh, don't forget if some of you uh, are holding or through your supervisor is getting any grants, so the authorship of the work may or may not be affected by the grant that you, for example, um, I got the grant from Sigvaris, so whatever that I do, I need to to mention them uh, as a part of the or is a sponsored grant. Okay, uh, conflict of interest actually depends on your if you're sponsored or not, because if you're sponsored by certain uh, uh, agency or industry sponsored, then it might sway your result one way or another. Uh, the other thing, um, don't um, plagiarize. Yeah, sometimes uh, the work has been done elsewhere. However, you cite and then you do not acknowledge. So that's considered the plagiarism. Uh, and also, if let's say uh, you have got uh, a few co-authors, make sure you 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 include them in your work when you present or when you uh, submit for publication. Yeah. Uh, so far, okay, uh, before going to some some examples, any questions so far? I think this is just a, a introduction in the morning, you know, uh, nothing heavy, so it's not uh, black and white, it's always grey. So it's just, uh, how should I say, just a principle or just a, a teaser in the morning, not, nothing too, too heavy. And any questions so far? Just to make sure that you're all awake. Okay, sh sh shall we move on? Is that okay? Yeah, you can continue. No questions. We understand. Okay, oh. excellent, excellent. Okay, so okay. Uh, of course, uh, when we talk about uh, responsible research, there's, I mean, there's many, many that I can cite, but at the moment, uh, or not the, the moment, you know, uh, about the uh, GMO, uh, genetic genetically modified uh, things that comes into the market. So that has become a big ethical discussion with regards to innovation. So is it is it is it uh, in one hand, it is to supply the bulk of the world with uh, food, but to genetically modify it, it is, is it ethical or in unethical? Therefore, the, the discussion and with regards to not just the genetics of it that you are changing, but how does it affect health? Excuse me. So uh, the, the discussion going on and on, there's positive and negative advantage and disadvantage. For the clinician amongst you, uh, I think uh, I cite this North American study that they did in the 1940s in North America. Uh, I think, uh, uh, this is the, the the timeline, you know. Whatever is being done, uh, which they thought is ethical then, has been proven that. But having said that, even if you you if you read it now, you know that the research methodology is unethical. Therefore, uh, it depends on the sign of times. And don't be. Um, don't be surprised. Whatever research that some of uh, or some of the scientists does in the last couple of years, fast forward 10, 15 years is unethical. So uh, in that in that uh, experiment, they want to uh, find out what the uh, uh, treatment for syphilis uh, is uh, is by uh, you know spirochetes. Uh, they were promised that they would be treated, but in actual fact, half of the uh, half of the subjects were actually given placebos. Therefore, they are not treated, so they follow up what are the side effects of syphilis. And, and uh, the the sad thing is that at that time, syphilis has got a known cure. So what they've actually done is two things. Ethically, they have denied one group of treatment when they know that there are uh, dire consequences 
Uh, and secondly, the ethical issue that they bypass is that they didn't tell. Uh, sorry, can can somebody mute their mic because I can hear. Oh, and, uh, yeah, the admin, can you mute everyone? But uh, except except if you want, sorry, except if you want to ask question, you switch on your mic and then just just uh, interrupt me. Uh, and then, sorry, going back to there's two ethical issues. One is denying treatment, and secondly, treatment is actually known, uh, but they are denied. And secondly, the uh, toll initially that we treated. Therefore, uh, that is one of the biggest uh, ethical um, problems in research uh, that I've uh, I've encountered. But uh, recently, you know about the cloning of the sheep uh, and then disclosure of some of the scientists. Yeah, so be careful when you have a large grant. Uh, you want to make it happen, but you ban certain rules and you know the, the rules are there for a reason. And knowing unknowingly, so that is also considered irresponsible. Yeah. So that uh, some side example and how uh, I remember that I mentioned about the um, local institution. Therefore, for us in IIUM, these are some of the document that as uh, that site governing your uh, research. Okay, we've got something uh, a document called Sejahtera Academic Framework or SAF. Uh, in short, so it, it embodies the principle of. Uh, of responsible uh, uh, research. Yeah. Uh, again, I won't dwell into it. So always, uh, you've heard of this term, and when you discuss with your uh, supervisors, uh, incorporate some of this because it does govern your research. Yeah. And if you remember that I said that if you go to the website for the uh, deputy director for responsible research and innovation. So uh, I mentioned about SAF earlier. So these are the building blocks for uh, governing your uh, your study. Therefore, if you look at it, it, of course, it has to tally with the vision and mission of the this university. So certain things might be slightly different from your vision and mission, your own institution. Uh, but if it has got some uh, should I say some uh, discrepancy between the two? Uh, discuss with your supervisor. Uh, it says there about conduct, how you conduct your research. Your as a research as a researcher, if you look at my, uh, I don't know whether you can see my pointer. Maybe I is a pointer. Okay, so on the left, the conduct of your research when you're doing it. It has to be positive on society. Remember I said that it has to be ethically and safe. Uh, remember the syphilis example and it's socially desirable and sustainable because uh, we have got this uh, SG. Yeah. Then it has high tech. OK, uh, and then as a researcher itself, you must have skills. That's why you're attending this course. Uh, um, the K values. And the stuff I mentioned earlier, and uh, the bottom part is just to enable the ecosystem. It's just because the way we are, uh, sorry, the way we are, uh, we we worry about policies and procedures. Different institution. Uh, uh, somebody mentioned about Ministry of Health, Ministry of Education. Uh, think about the facilities where you're doing your work, funding, what governs your funding, either internally or externally. Uh, how do you deal with information and uh, human source? Sorry, I just... Okay. Okay, that's what... Uh, why do we bother about all this? Isn't it? Uh, some of you have done research as an... Un, uh, at the basic degree, now doing at the master's or PhD level. Uh, however, we might... Two things, either slightly forgotten why we do all this, why is uh, this possible research is important, or the last time we did it, uh, either 
not including human subject or animals. And now we are doing it differently. And secondly, the areas is different. For example, last time you did it locally. Now, sorry, uh, overseas. Now you're doing it locally. The main, I think the main um, area is ethics. Ethics that govern your study and ethics that you conduct in itself. Yeah. So if I do summarize, why do we need to look into it? There's a lot of emerging signs. Uh, for example, you have uh, people either producing, uh, sorry, my examples mainly are, are clinical, but I'm sure in terms of your, your non-clinical, uh, it has to tie with either it's industry or uh, for, for, for treatment, you know. All the emerging signs, for example, uh, uh, you, you found some some abstract, uh, sorry, extract, some certain thing, or in engineering, you find that some uh, instrument that can be translated for, for treatment. So there's a lot of emerging signs. So who governs this emerging science and does it have? So that's ethical consideration, ethics of it, sorry, ethics of using emerging science. For example, if suddenly I found a mushroom somewhere and the local inhabitants have been using for hundreds of years for to treat certain ailments, therefore that's an emerging science. So, so how do I translate it ethically to do a, a study, for example? And then be, uh, be careful about how you you uh, approach in terms of how it works. So ethic is it? How is it conduct ethically? Uh, of course, there's emerging ideas. For example, this uh, usually in quantum physics, there's a, an idea that needs to translate to uh, to physicality. So how do you do that? And Emerging ideas, for example, uh, I mentioned earlier about AI. Uh, it's not emerging anymore, it's with us. How do we translate it uh, to become ethical? Uh, I, uh, if you follow the news recently, uh, even at the Oscars, they have decided initially they don't want to use AI. Uh, sorry, the preamble is that uh, they want to keep all the recordings of previous uh, actors so that can use AI. So in future, they don't need actors anymore. And if, anyway, uh, it's been discussed and then uh, they have got an agreement now. They can use parts of it rather than not using it at all. OK, similarly, uh, what happens to clinician in the future? If you have, you've got an AI, do you just uh, employ AI to diagnose certain things without even having a, a human uh, influence to it? Okay. And the other thing is financial implication. Financial implication with regards to uh, the ethics of it. Uh, for example, uh, in our lab the last time, some of our work has been funded by some major companies. What if the, the result does not uh, support whatever that they're doing. Do we still report it or report it in a sense that uh, will not be biased? Uh, again, the, the keyword is bias. Yeah? Uh, and the other thing I was thinking is ego, ego if, of each of the uh, researcher. Um, I suppose uh, everyone has got ego. So in doing uh, your research, you need to Think of it. Some of you will be sitting there and say, so what, you know, uh, how does it affect uh, you? You just want to get your PhD and master's or, and then get on with it. To your, so what? how does this uh, uh, affect me? Um, one, maybe if you reflect, is that we are part of a bigger community. Uh, whatever that you do, uh, if it's published, then it is there out there in the world. So they might take your your research and uh, uh, and then might use it either 
uh, rightly or wrongly. Um, so that is why it's, you are important. You, uh, whatever research that you do um, has got a, a give uh, credit, not credibility, does have a affect things uh, in general. Yeah. Okay, so uh, the two issues, responsible research, research innovation uh, that affects you or uh, that you have to ask yourself, um, can we define the right outcomes and impacts of research and innovation? So uh, that's why I said, so what? So you think that, yes, I have a result. So how does it affect? So what is the right outcome and impact to research and innovation? So some quarters might think that your result have a positive impact. However, in the second group who does not agree with you might think it is detrimental. So that's the reason why. Um, sorry, I just... Stop this pointer for a second. Anyway, I want to move my okay. Yeah, I'm not, okay. So if we do have outcomes, um can we agree upon them? Uh, this is the two groups I was talking about. Uh, for example, I have a, a, a medication. So the medication uh, does, uh, from my from my research, only 50% or less than 50% have got an impact. So how do I report it responsibly? Do I say that uh, this also depends on uh, on the industry. So the way they will do it is there's no negative impact, which is true. Or you will uh, report it as, oh, only less than 50%. Therefore, the way you report it also uh, is being responsible. Um, again, uh, I, wouldn't do, I wouldn't dwell into it. Uh, the way data is presented, uh, one data can be presented in many ways to affect a lot of things. So when you report it, be responsible. Uh, I think your conscience will guide you. Yeah. Uh, we talk about artificial intelligence. Uh, it's uh, apart from in the health, it's been there in an industry. Um, and it is here, it is here to stay and it will affect us. But how do you govern it? Govern it in terms of either not just training. Second is how we conduct research and how do we extrapolate from the result of the uh, the, the result. M maybe I, I throw you a question. Because of this artificial intelligence, we shouldn't be doing research anymore because they can predict with all the algorithm. Uh, so why do we need to do research? Because AI is there, you know. So if you want to uh, to argue, then we don't need uh, research anymore. Maybe uh, I can ask uh, to the to the audience later, you know. Okay, how do we um, after we know what it is, how in fact, why, how are the what are the strategies uh, for us to um, govern or try to make sure that you become responsible uh, researchers? So 20 of you are attending this course. So we give you some input and insight uh, what responsible research and innovations are. Uh, so that is to have uh, uh, an own insight. Uh, sorry, uh, admin, can we mute some of the uh, mics of the participant? Thanks. I think accident. Oh, I can do it. Maybe second. 
Sultan Kamis, can you mute your mic? Thanks. Okay, uh, uh, but but if you want to ask question, please please do. Um, just just howler, yeah. Um, again, um, uh, this is part of how to to instill the responsible research, uh, uh, listening to this course, and of course we can govern it by doing some guidelines. And then we have committees, for example, for the ministry on for Ministry of Education, we have committees and at the local level. We have. Uh, uh, what do you call that? We have. We have. Uh, we have uh, committees that overseas at the ethical level, and for those of you. Uh, Doing research in IIM, we have got IREC, IREC, that is our ethical branch that oversees, especially if you're doing human subjects. However, even now, animals are also strongly strongly governed by their ethical uh, ethical guidelines. Um, and there are legislation and law, for example, genetics, genetic testing, uh, you have to got a special committee. So if you're doing research on genetics, then uh, apart from the ethical committee, it has to go to another committee that looks into genetics. Uh, I wouldn't look into it. I think uh, so there's some talk after this uh, in this course of two or three days. Okay, next. Oops. Okay. Uh, I mentioned to you about what governs you. However, what do you need to prepare yourself? I think these are some of the things that I can think of. Uh, honesty and integrity for each and every one of you. Uh, you must be objective. Uh, again, <laughs> the objective might be financial, but but again, objectivity of your study. You know, uh, you have one clear objective. Uh, you must be open to criticism, especially from your supervisor, co-supervisor, and even your subjects. You know, some sub subject says, oh, um, whoever it is, this does not agree or this one is uh, um, not acceptable. So you must be open because when you're thinking about your methodology, you may or may not think about your subjects. Is it acceptable or not? Uh, number four is important. Uh, respect for intellectual property. Therefore, when you use certain things or when you want to embark on something, make sure that either it's been uh, done before, uh, it's been, uh, uh, what do you call that? Uh, it has been uh, published before somewhere, so you must cite their work. Uh, five is important for us in the medical, is confidentiality, uh, because we, we don't want the data to be open to public or even to other person uh, because it can be used in positive or negative way. Yeah. Uh, we talk about publication, publication, the legality, uh, who should own the rights, the first author, second, third and fourth author. Uh, for some of you who's doing animal care, make sure you follow the guideline either, uh, sorry, the international uh, OK, uh, local versus international or the national guideline uh, supersede what local is, uh, guideline is, uh, and human subject protection. OK, the one is important if you're doing. OK, uh, some of, uh, for example, in the European Union, uh, when you talk about uh, ethics of doing or when you talk about responsible research, they talk about mutual relationship therefore uh, you can see it I, i'll show you the the so this is what they they uh, propose this is in their treaty treaty means that it's a law so whenever you have a research it has to be interdependent for example it has to be, have social justice equality uh, women men and fundamental rights so it has to be looked upon it has to be sustainable uh, again, how does it impact the market economy? Uh, balance with the promotion of scientific and technological advance. 
and quality of life. So when you do something, you have to think about all this. Sorry, this is for the European Union. So I'm talking about uh, how they govern your responsible research. So as a summary, what they said is the collective responsibility, both for the right and impact. Sorry, I just moved because I can't see. Uh, uh, right and negative consequences. So you have, have to balance. Again, you have to ask yourself the impacts that you're doing for, with the research, either right or wrong, intentional or unintentional. For example, um, from your research, you're doing more harm to good while your intentions are right, uh, but it is not ethical if you're doing harm on either uh, animals or uh, you're doing harm to the human especially. Uh, I mean, if human, definitely, yeah. Okay, uh, can move. Okay, for us, locally uh, in the Kulia of Medicine, uh, I think the Dean have started with a uh, guideline for the use of AI. Uh, but it will then filter down to university, the use of AI for research. If they have not, I'm sure they've thought of it. And if not uh, um, there, I'm sure it will be there in the subsequent. Yeah, because that's the big thing that I can see now. Yeah. I think uh, just under 50 minutes. Uh, we are told, especially lecture per se, we don't have lectures anymore. Uh, you cannot stand or stare at the monitor for more than one hour. So uh, I will conclude my discussion. However, I will be more than happy to take any queries that you have, any, any question. Sorry, I can't see the chat, chat box because again, as I said, I'm not very familiar with these teams. So, uh, administrator tadi siapa? Dr. Anything in the chat, sorry. Oh, I attend, sorry. Uh, any, any, no, Dr. At the chat, just only I attend. Saya, saya perlu, do I need to uh, put that in I attend? Uh, no, no, no. Just for the okay. student. I attend for the student okay. only. Okay. So, uh, any question? Let me see. Unshare. So, stop sharing. If I stop sharing. Already start sharing. Ah, uh, okay. I have to stop, eh? Um, yeah. Sekejap. Any any question? Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, is it Camila? Is it Camila? Uh, kalau eh, is she there? Uh, Camila, sorry. Um, in the, the the schedule says two hours. I don't think I'm going to do for two hours. Because lecture online, Sonia, even our lecture one hour max, kan? And I think. Uh, what 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 is the uh, because the new format according to Prof mm -hmm. Jamal. It should be, uh, I don't know. Um, you, you have, uh, yeah, practical is different, isn't it? So I don't have. Uh, yeah, yeah. Your slot doesn't have the practical session. Yeah, because uh, I only saw it late because had I known, because initially I thought it was an hour. If I thought, uh, if I saw it's two hours, I might have given some materials for them to discuss. Uh, if not, somebody asked about presentation slides. I will PDF it and uh, and, and Camila nanti remind me. Yeah, I will Boleh give it to you. Uh, yeah, but I, I will give it. I, I convert it to um, PDF first. Is that okay? Uh, okay. Another two two minutes. Kalau tak ada, uh, I will sign off. Yeah. Thank you everyone okay. for listening. Uh, it's too early in the morning. Thank you, Doctor. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you very much. You're welcome. And have a good uh, workshop. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you.